Greetings, everybody. This is Winnie Riggle, and welcome back to Direwolf 20's 1.16 mod pack. Today, I want power, and these guys seem to know it. Ha! 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 Help! Wow, you're just doing all my work for me. Everybody, what? Uh-uh! We need there. Get out of my energy area. Yeah. I think I have bad omen. Anybody else? <laughs> Stupid zombie. <laughs> Bueller, ah, hello. Oh, he scared me, dude. Anybody down here? Har. Ah, ah! That, that was rude. Mm-hmm. Ow. As I was saying, uh, welcome to episode 12. I mentioned that I want power, specifically dimensional cells from RF tools. Why do I want these? Because we don't have to put ugly pipes across our base. If you combine a dimensional cell with a power cell card, we can link these as basically it functions like a multi-block across the base. What that means is that I can create power anywhere, like here with our tree oil setup. And then if I want to use the power anywhere else in the base, I just set up a dimensional cell and it powers that from here. But there's a catch. The, the arrows in my head, they're ridiculous. That's okay, we'll keep going. <laughs> there's a catch. The recipe for the dimensional cell. So if we look at the recipe for a dimensional cell, it seems fairly straightforward. Block of redstone, diamond, machine frame, we can make all that, except for this. Prismarine shard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Guess where we get that? Okay, in modded, the answer is probably a number of places. Let me show you. So technically we could go down the nature's aura path and get it by converting nether quartz. However, I have plans and they involve the ocean monument that I passed by when I went out collecting slime and other cool things. If we take a look at our map, you can see that there's ocean just to the left of us. And in fact, there is an ocean monument eh, right around here. I passed, I either passed it there or I passed it over here. Regardless, we can get back there. But in order for us to even get near an ocean monument and collect some prismarine shards, we need better armor. We also need better tools. So that's the focus of today's episode is upgrading our armor to mechanisms refined obsidian armor and upgrading our tools using Tetra. And I have secret things that I have found underground to help us with that. Let's start by taking a peek at our project box because the mechanism armor is where we're gonna start and that we already have everything we need to make it. So here are the materials we're going to need, including the obsidian dust and osmium to make the armor itself. If we take a look at refined obsidian armor, it's just made with refined obsidian ingots. Those refined obsidian ingots can be made in an osmium compressor by combining refined obsidian dust and osmium. We get refined obsidian dust by putting obsidian dust in a metallurgic infuser with enriched diamonds or diamonds of any kind. So first we need to make our osmium compressor and that is fairly straightforward. It's a steel casing. Ta-da! Couple of buckets, two advanced control circuits. Oh so yeah, we only need two of those. And some buckets. And there is our osmium compressor. Woohoo! Now we have obsidian dust, which is left over from me upgrading our energy cubes, but we need to turn that into refined obsidian dust. And the way we do that is combine regular obsidian dust with diamond dust, or in this case, enriched diamond dust in a metallurgic infuser. So let's go make some refined obsidian dust. Okay, and I think I already have a metallurgic infuser. Yes, with some diamonds in it. So if we just add our obsidian dust, so it's infusing the obsidian dust with diamonds. And I brought extra diamonds in case we need it. We get refined obsidian dust. Let's get a couple of these. Okay, let's take four. And while the rest of those cook up, let's set up our osmium compressor. I'm just gonna move this metallurgic infuser, put our osmium compressor down. 
And this is going to in compress osmium with our refined obsidian dust. And we should get refined obsidian ingots. Let me cook up enough of these for some armor and some tool improvements and we'll be right back. And one more makes 32. I think that's a good start for making armor and improving tools. So we're going to make the boots, the pants, the chest plate, and the helmet out of refined obsidian. So there we go. Chest plate, pants, helmet, boots. And you may ask why I'm making these. Let's just compare the chest plate our current diamond chest plate gives us plus eight armor and plus two armor toughness the refined obsidian chest plate gives us plus 12 armor plus four armor toughness and plus one knockback resistance i would call that a significant improvement the other thing we can do to make this even better is take the enchantments off of our current armor set by using our disenchanter and putting them on the new refined obsidian armor. So I have respiration, air affinity, protection three and breaking three, aqua affinity, protection four and breaking three and reach on the shirt, protection four and breaking three in the leggings, protection four and breaking three and feather falling three on the boots. And I'll bet I have some books from all the disenchanting I've been doing that might also be useful. Maybe we can improve some of the protection, like the helmet. Do we have protection four? I have magic protection four. I have projectile protection four. I think the projectile protection four might come in handy and be slightly better for us than the protection three on the helmet. So the first step is to have a bunch of books in the disenchanter, and then we put the armor in there that has the enchantment, and we can pull those enchantments off the armor. So now our unbreaking three and protection four, we can put on the pants. So we disenchanted our diamond leggings. Now we're going to re-enchant our refined obsidian leggings with those same enchantments. And I'm actually going to combine them on a single book and then enchant our leggings. So we'll call these fancy pants. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna do that same thing for all the other pieces of armor and I'll bring you back. So I ran out of XP in an attempt to enchant the rest of the armor. However, we have access to liquid mob essence in our mob farm, and we can turn that into bottles of enchanting using a dissolution chamber. To make a dissolution chamber, we need a pity machine frame, a diamond gear, a couple of pieces of gold, buckets, plastic, and a chest. Ugh, need a chest. Ta-da, dissolution chamber. Okay, let's take this step. Well, let's take a nap. Cause I don't think I've slept for a couple of Minecraft days and that can be dangerous. And let's take our dissolution chamber down to the mob farm and see if we can make use of the mob essence to give us some XP using bottles of enchanting. So we're down here at our mob farm, which is still on and doing great. I AFK'd for about half an hour and we are getting up there on ender pearls and blaze rods and other good things. I did also add a trash chest to this so that all the miscellaneous armor and tools, etc., like the bows and broken things are all going into the trash. So here is where we have our third quantum tank, which has essence in it. And if we take a look at essence from industrial foregoing, we can do a couple of things so that we can put it in a bucket. Uh, we can use a fluid encapsulator and put it in a bottle of enchanting, or we can just put it in a dissolution chamber and it should produce bottles of enchanting. Fingers crossed. We don't actually need glass for this. So I'm just going to set this down next to the quantum tank. I am going to add it to the XNet system because it needs power. So we'll go to our power channel and make sure that it has an insert and check that it, yes, it is getting power. And then I think I'm just going to use the industrial foregoing interface for fluid input to the east. Yes. And say pull. And there it goes. 
Yeah, that's pretty cool. Bottles of enchanting just out of nowhere. Yeah, and then we can just smash them at our feet and look at that XP. That's amazing. This is great because this means that we can make use of what we're producing from the mob farm. I'm going to take a couple of stacks of these so that I'm sure I have enough XP to finish our enchanting. That's pretty useful reuse of that mob essence. We will also need it once we, uh, the next version of Industrial Fork going, that is in the next version of the Direwolf pack, has finally added the mob duplicator block so that we can duplicate any mobs that we capture in a mob capturing device, which is part of the reason we're gonna go to an ocean monument so that we can capture a guardian so that we can get prismarine. Okay, and I'm just checking once it's full up on bottles of enchanting, does it indeed stop? And I think it will once it fills up its reserve and does not consume any more power, which is great. So I think I'm going to take these three stacks so that we can go do some enchanting and we'll always have three stacks, which is about 30 levels worth of XP available to us for anything we need it for. And 32 levels for the last one, which is our helmet, which is going to have respiration three, air affinity, projectile protection four, unbreaking three, and aqua affinity. This makes this a very nice. Oh, I need 33. Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, 33 levels. There we go. Which makes this. A very nice hat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we've got all of those. We have unbreaking and protection four on our legs and chest, along with reach three, which I love. If you don't know what reach is, it means that I can like reach way up here and set stuff down. It's fantastic, especially as a builder. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Like, look, I can put it, look how far away I can put a torch. Isn't that amazing? Reach is awesome. I can reach across our entire ravine. Okay. And then our boots have feather falling three, protection four, and unbreaking three. And that, that should be okay. We'll be fine. Next up, we want to upgrade our tools. And the way we're going to do that is using, of course, Tetra, since that's how many of our tools were made. There is one exception. That is something I need to show you that I have added since the last time we were together. And that is this cool thing, it's called a marine fisher. This is from the industrial foregoing mob. The recipe is fairly simple now that we have access to plastic and the ability to make the simple machine frames in our dissolution chamber. So if you put a marine fisher down and provide it with power, in this case, I've just used a plain old generator and I keep feeding it coal. It fishes up things from the bottom of the ocean. Take a look at this. This is better than standing out here fishing. We have all the cod we will ever need for our yummy sandwiches. We have puffer fish for making potions of water breathing. All kinds of enchanted books. Oh, look, Depth Strider 3. Okay, I might put that on my boots. Look at this. Mana boost, piercing, protection 3, holding, bane of arthropods. <laughs> <laughs> more unbreaking threes flanks i don't even know what that does allows the wielder to move faster while using a shield how cool is that curse of binding true shot all kinds of stuff including enchanted bows so let me show you what i have done with our bow check this out power five infinity unbreaking three quick shot three quick draw two and true shot too. Yeah, that's right. I maxed out every possible bow enchantment we could have. Uh, this is not a Tetra bow yet. It is still just a vanilla bow, but it is uber powerful. It will serve us well. But we want to talk about Tetra and upgrades for our other tools. When I did go mining in this world under our ravine, I managed to find one of the structures that we were looking for from Tetra that gives us some of the extra things we need. In fact, I found two structures. 
So what we're going to do is take some of the goodies I found in those metal scrap, flex mesh, thermal cell, a bolt and a quick latch. And we're going to get rid of our uninvited guests. Thank you. And run down here to our old mines without dying. Oh, did you see me almost fall? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've actually cleared these out so I can find my way to these very cool ruins. Okay, so the first one is this way. And it's right here. So when you are, when you have Tetra installed, you're looking for one of these. So this one has these, which are core extractors. They are used to charge your thermal cells. So you stick the thermal cell in here and it will charge. And you know that they're active because they're orange down here. I've covered that up because it's very dangerous. This whole thing has lava underneath it. And then once they're full, you can see that that says thermal cell charge full found in structures deep underground. Very cool. This one's not working. That's why I wanted to show it to you. See how it's not orange. This extractor pipe is not active. So only one of these was active and there was nothing else up here except for just really cool blocks. Now, if we go the other direction, I dug this out using our beautiful thermal flux core drill all the way down here. We have yet another ruin from Tetra, but this one has the thing that we need to make progress in this mod and it's called a forge hammer. You got it. Okay. So it requires two full thermal cells to work. I put a regular crafting table underneath. And if you'll remember, if you hit a crafting table with a hammer, it turns into a Tetra workbench. It also has um, on these, I found one of these across the way. So our Osmium Carpenter's axe, I actually added a claw to the back side of the axe. In fact, if I put it in here, I can show you. So the front is a regular axe piece, right? And the back is a steel claw so that we can use it as a crowbar. So you can see when I hold it up to this, it's got the number tells you what level the symbol is a crowbar. And because it's white, it means I can use it. So if I right click that with a hammer, I get the planar stabilizer that I found. So there are four or five of these upgrades that you can find. You can only find them. They do not have a crafting recipe. And in order for your forge hammer to work, you need two of them. Any two will work. I think, can I get you off of there? Yep. This one is a lubricant dispenser. This one was actually on this hammer. This one I found in a chest, which yeah, here. So here is a forged container and you use a crowbar to pry off the latches and then you find stuff inside. So there's more metal scrap and redstone. So you look for these containers. They're also containers that are the shape of a block. So you put the two upgrades, the stabilizer and the lubricant dispenser on the two sides of the forge hammer. And now the hammer along with the full thermal cells in it will work. So I went and collected a couple of materials just to show you an example. So right now we have an osmium blade. If we wanted to make an obsidian blade, I'm not saying we want to do that, but if we did, it would require a tier five hammer and we have one available because we're standing under the forge hammer down here. I am not even close to being an expert on Tetra and all the materials you could use to potentially upgrade your tools to even better amazing ones. I will instead refer you to tutorials listed in the links below, primarily by Mischief of Mice. Valen does a fantastic job walking through the details of Tetra and how to upgrade your tools. 
So the last thing we need to do in preparation for our adventures is to make a mob capture tool from industrial foregoing. And the way we do that is we take ghast tears, which I happen to have four of, and some plastic, and you surround the gas tiers with plastic and that makes a mob imprisonment tool. So we're actually going to make all four of these. We'll use all my gas tiers. Hope we don't need them for anything else. So let's demonstrate on our friendly neighborhood farm animals. I can pick up a cow and set down a cow and the mob imprisonment tool is reusable. Also, when it has the entity in it, you can see what entity it is. So we can see that we have a Minecraft cow and it has not quite complete health. Wow, that, that's a heck of a decimal. Mm -hmm. So we should be able to pick up whatever mob we want and store it in our mob imprisonment tool. So we will take it with us. But for today, I believe we're out of time. I'll meet you at the Ocean Monument in the next episode. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, please leave a like. It helps me out and I appreciate it. If you'd like to keep up with what's going on on the channel, don't hesitate to subscribe. And remember, as always, you are the shiny stuff that awesome is made of. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>